Thank you for having us. Um, we've also got Chase out at the table. Um, we're going to sing a, a few songs. If you know the words, you sing along with us. We're going to worship God. Amen. 
saving us from, from the addiction that we were in. We thank you for bringing us here and allowing us to, to play songs for you, to, to worship you through music. just want to ask that everything that um, comes out of our mouth today is to glorify you. We love you and we thank you. Going 
spring of that following year. Um, I wasn't able to take any of the classes that I originally wanted to. All my friends had already taken the classes that I was currently taking, so I wasn't able to really see them on a daily basis. So uh, I got new friends, and my new friends introduced me to some drugs, to some alcohol, and that's pretty much what spent up most of my time while I was there. Um, I really had nothing else to do because I was out of class, and I, I used that as my new hobby, um, smoking and drinking, um, which um, was a really bad, bad, bad combination. I ended up dropping out of college, living, moving back with my parents, um, and as the years went on, my self-worth was um, completely gone. Uh, as I did more and more drugs, um, my life just kind of seemed to spiral out of control. Um, I didn't, I had lost my purpose. The one thing that I really wanted to do after college was to either go to New York or LA and pursue um, a dance career. And um, all the hopes of that was out, were out the window, so being stranded, I, I was unsure of my future. I wasn't sure what to do. Um, and I became steadily and steadily more unhappy. And I used the drugs and alcohol to fill that void um, that for that, just to get that momentary gratification. Um, so on a daily basis, I was just in this fog consistently um, of not soberness, wanting to escape the reality of what my life had become and how my life was just getting worse the more I tried to escape, um, which fueled my, you know, my addiction even more. Um, it, it got really bad um, when I, I started stealing from my parents. Um, I started to lie to them on a daily basis, you know, telling them I was going out looking for a job when really I was just getting high with my friends, um, spending the money that they would give me for food or for gas on drugs or alcohol, um, going to parties all the time, and just kind of throwing everything in the wind and um, just, it's like a snowball effect. It just builds and builds and builds and it gets harder and harder to stop um, for me. And over the years, I had completely lost, uh, at this point, my relationship with Jesus um, because of this. You know, I'd always pray to him, like, get me out of the situation. I'd always pray for things for when I was in my, my time of need um, and I felt guilty about it. So eventually, because I would feel guilty that I only prayed during those times, I stopped praying altogether. Um, and I completely cut him off from my life because, because I knew what, what, what I was doing and I knew what I was getting myself into and I thought I had control over my life, um, which was so far from the truth. Um, it got pretty bad. Uh, two years ago, I started um, to inflict self-harm uh, on myself because of my lack of self-care and I had steadily growing hatred for myself that, was, that had replaced the love that I used to have for myself and the things that I had done um, uh, in the past. And this past year, before coming to Teen Challenge, um, I had tried a few times to take my own life. Um, <coughs> and really, uh, honestly and truly, I, I should not be standing here right now speaking for you guys. Um, just the things that I've gone through and survived is um, a miracle in itself. Uh, my mom found a teen challenge when I was in a, um, a mental rehabilitation facility trying to get my life, my life back on track because of the attempts um, at ending my own life. I was placed in the hospital because of that. And while I was there, she found the Dalton Teen Challenge uh, of San Antonio. And since coming, since coming here and completely starting my life, uh, I've been in the program a little over four months. Or I'm in my fourth month currently. Um, and I'm a completely new creation in Christ. Um, everything that I've done in the past is in the past, and this relationship that I have built with Jesus and regained that um, is incredible. The love that he has for me and for all of you um, is something that we will never be able to truly understand um, until he returns, and I, I can use that love to start loving myself again. Um, which is what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And I can use that love to love others um, and replace all the hatred that I had in my heart with that love. My heart becomes so hardened um, that I never wanted to take any criticism, any advice from anybody. Um, but 
things that he's done in my life, the restoration that he's doing with my family right now um, is, is um, awe-inspiring. Just the, the trust that is slowly starting to be rebuilt um, because of this program is something that I never thought would be able to happen uh, in my life from the things that I've done. And every day I learn something new, the prayer time that we have on a daily basis, the scripture readings, the, uh, the classroom teachings, that we are consistently in the Word um, for this 12-month discipleship faith-based program is um, completely restoring my, my love for myself and others. And it's, uh, it's, it's really a miracle. So that's a little bit about my story. I could go on and on for, for hours. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to end it there. So thank you so much for your time today.
they go into our third phase program, which is where they actually get a job out in the community. And that way we've got one foot still in a safe, secure place where they have accountability, and another foot learning to sort of step out into the world again. And to Sean, who was Dr. Reader Vessel and Catalyst for my relationship with Christ. So there's been so much refinement in this program, just like little tiny things to big things. The thing that I know the most about them when they graduate, um, as opposed to when they come in, is the kindness and the love. They don't even look the same. Like you can hold a picture of when they came in to a picture when they graduate, it looks like a different person. We have volunteers come on a daily basis. And a regular basis to come and pour eggs to our campus. I just remember we had this lady who came in to do a parenting class, and it really got to me because I realized as she's pointing to us, it's changing my daughter's life. Men come in who do volunteer and they do spend time with the students. That's probably one of the most uh, critical things for them. T Town is funded primarily by individuals and churches, some foundations and corporations. And we also run our own businesses. We have four thrift stores that help to fund the program. And students uh, create beautiful crosses, jewelry, and t-shirts, um, all of which help to support the ministry. We have special events three or four times a year, a banquet. We have a golf tournament. We have a 5K every year in January. All of these things are designed to help us generate funds so that finances does not have to be the deciding factor on whether someone can be admitted into the program or not. We're always looking for volunteers in our first stores um, to do work on campus. Um, and he really, if someone wants to help, we'll put them to work. I thought there was no way out of my situation. I thought there was no escape, but this program has given me an escape. Seeing children in a place where it takes a mystery and helps them to be Christian and man. And Old Key Town in Texas hopes to have a presence in every major city in Texas. And we're also hoping to launch more adolescent programs to reach teens when they really need it. Well, we have actually in Texas, for most of the time we've been here, been an adult center, but we are now opening our first adolescent center in Baton Rouge. That's what will be an avenue to where younger adolescents will be able to be ministered to before they come to an uh, later age in life, let's say 25 or so, that they can get their life turned around and get on the path that God has for them at an earlier age. Teen Challenge needs hope and really needs renewal. I lost my only child to addiction six years ago. It'll be six years ago tomorrow, actually. And I see, and from both perspectives, what it's like to have addiction in a family and a life. And it means to me that I can work in a program that is going to help people to not have to experience the loss of a child or any loved one as I experienced. It's the opportunity for freedom and to know who I really am and whose I really am, and the opportunity to live a life I never thought it would be possible. Teen Challenge means hope to me. Um, I'm a graduate of Teen Challenge as well as my dad and my sister. God used Teen Challenge to break the cycle of addiction um, in my family. In the Teen Challenge means life. Teen Challenge means hope. Teen Challenge means a new beginning.
I was born a Christian, you could say. Um, so when it came to, to actually living for Christ, um, it, it was difficult because I, I had grown up around it. I had this idea of what being a Christian was, um, but that didn't match up with what I wanted to do as far as um, enjoying myself, having a good time, what I thought was a good time. And so I fell, um, started drinking. Um, the drinking led to drugs and um, eventually to just places and things that I never imagined myself being a part of. Um, all that to say, I, I went through the program in, in California and um, begrudgingly did an internship and begrudgingly went to the ministry institute and eventually God called me to become a staff member 14 challenge. And along the way, um, as I said, begrudgingly, I was, I was telling myself, I'm not going to be staff member, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do this. And the whole time God was telling me, you are going to do those things. You, you're you're going to serve me, and if you want to serve me, this is what you're going to do. Um, so here I am, San Antonio, Texas. I've been here for three months, um, and... Couldn't be more blessed, couldn't be more um, joyful with what the Lord has, has given me in this time. Um, so now I'm going to tell you a little bit about the program, a little bit about why we're here. Um, so I'm going to have um, Randy pass out these prayer cards. I hope we have a lot more people in this service than there were the first one. So um, he, Randy is handing out these. It's a, a prayer card. So every day, three times a day, um, we at San Antonio get on our knees and pray um, for 30 minutes. We take, what we do is we take these prayer cards and um, we have a whiteboard. We, we put them on the whiteboard. We put some of our prayer requests on there. And um, like I said, 30 minutes a day, we have, uh, I think we're about 50 to 60 men now praying for these prayer cards. So if you have any prayer requests, if you have anything, um, nothing's too small, nothing's too big. We, we want to pray for it. We want to pray for you. Um, so if you fill those out and um, give them back to us before we leave, we'll be able to take those back to our campus. And um, like I said, we'll pray over them. Another thing that I want to share with you is, is um, becoming a sponsor. So, like they said on the video, um, we are not going to allow finances to be the reason somebody doesn't get the help that they need. Um, as believers, we know that we're, that we're to share with each other, that we're to love, that we're to do these things. And so, um, through Team Challenge, um, we we don't turn people away for financial reasons. In fact, um, after the initial entrance fee, they don't. There are are no um, fees that they have to pay until they get to the third phase and start working. And that is to teach them how to how to um, budget, how to pay rent, how to do these things. And so, in able to to offer in order. Or a way to offset the cost because you know as you can imagine 60 men living in one location eating um, and just living there gets kind of expensive and so what we do is we we fundraise we have um, we receive donations uh, when you're when we're done here you can go over to this room and we have a table set up of woodwork <coughs> The men on campus actually make, they make by hand crosses and flaps. They're very beautiful. Um, you can purchase those, um, you can donate, but the sponsorship is a big one. The sponsorship is more than just a way for you to financially help Team Challenge. It's also a way for you to encourage an individual student. So sponsorship is, is $35 a month for the year. Um, I believe it comes out to $420 for the year. But um, 
through the sponsorship, you also get to write to the students. You'll receive a profile telling you about the student, where they're from, how old they are, a little bit about themselves. It has a picture showing you who they are. Um, and you have the opportunity to write to the student, and they will write back. You will receive um, progress reports telling you how they're doing, and it's just a really neat way um, to encourage the students. You know, because when you when you go into the, when, when you're in the program, um, it can be real easy to think to, to feel like there's no one out there supporting you um, when when we're. In our addiction, we kind of burn a lot of bridges, and so having somebody outside of our families, having somebody outside in the church that's supporting and rooting the students on is a really big thing. Um, also, you you'll get a letter and an invitation to the students' um, graduation, so you can come, you can see them finish the program um, and go out into the world. Like Austin was saying. Um, a new creation. Second Corinthians uh, five seventeen says, "Therefore, anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. Behold, the old is gone, the new has come." And that's that's what happens. They they come into Teen Challenge broken and just down on their luck, having having nothing. And God creates a new a new um, person. He, he he takes their heart and he makes it new. And so. Through the sponsorship, you're able to not only be a part of that, but also to witness it um, yourself. And so we will be, um, like I said, we'll be out at the table. We'll have um, plenty of these if anybody would like to sponsor, if anybody has any more questions about that. Um, also, um, what I wanted to, the last thing I wanted to talk about is um, video is a little old since uh, this video is made. Bass Drop is open um, for adolescent teens. Round Rock actually has a center for adolescent girls now. So that is um, in addition to um, Magnolia for men, Pasadena for women, San Antonio for men and women, um, separate campuses. And then also um, in Azle, there's a men's campus. But next month, January 2020, we are actually opening a center right here in Corpus Christi. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yes. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. Um, and I know that sometimes we don't see, um, or maybe you do see the need um, for these things, but any any extra locations, any extra beds, any extra things that we, that we have that we're able to further um, God's ministry that we're able to, to help um, change people's lives is, is a blessing. And so, um, like I said, any, any sponsorship, any donations, anything like that really does go a long way. Um, so, like I said, we'll be out there um, after the service. You can come check out our grass. If you have any more questions, um, we'd be happy to, to answer those. And if you'd like to get one of these sponsorships and fill it out before we leave, it would be definitely a blessing. So thank you very much.